So the most important stuff we're going to look at today is on the left hand, your left hand side of the board, as far as the work that we're doing today. However, we're going to be looking at log functions, and I thought it was, I thought it was a good idea to firstly look at log functions and then try and see some similarities between the two. So, exponential functions we'd be familiar can come in this form now. We are very quickly going to get away from this form, but I want to show you how this works first, and then we can look at the representation we've got e as the base rather than a number. So here is our exponential function. Happy with that? What type of function is that exponential? We know this is an exponential growth function. How do we, what do we expect to see the A value to be given that it's an exponential growth? We know the A value must be? More than one. Awesome. Happy with that? Um, I've added a K value in just so, because we looked at that last time. We looked at the fact that there's a vertical shift on our um, exponential function and K represents the location of the asymptote. Very good. So if there's no K value, the asymptote occurs up. Yeah, y equals zero. Here's our general form. I've tried to keep things as much as possible similar. So if we look at our general form here, and this is we're talking about transformations and translations. What's, what are, when, I, when I say transformations and translations, what am I talking about? How we move the function. So our baseline exponential sits on the zero and moves up, and then we have to add transformations to, to change how that looks. What do you think the k value does? Up and down, so we call that a vertical translation. So that's literally just picking our function, moving it up or moving it down, depending on our k value. Good. We're pretty happy with that, we've done it before. What do you think our h value stands for? Horizontal, and I'm always getting nervous about this word. I probably shouldn't get nervous going. Have I spelled vertical correctly? Probably not. It's AL, isn't it? Yep. Those who can't do it. And again, moving it left or right. Awesome. So if we see a H value, we know we're moving it left or right. Obviously, we need to be aware that with the H value, the sign is again swapped. Now we've dealt very closely with the C value before. What do we think the C value is going to do? Often we call this an A value, but I can't reuse the letter A. It's a vertical dilation. That is not even close. So think of that as grabbing the function and stretching it up and stretching it down. Cool. And then lastly, we've got B. We have looked very briefly at B, but what do you think B is going to do? Where is B applying next to what value? X minus H. X minus H. So let's say we've got a B value of 2. And our X value is 1, our H value is 0. What have we done to our X value essentially? Double it. Okay. So it's going to be a stretch. We can identify it's going to be a stretch of some variety, correct? Well, if that's a vertical dilation, vertical stretching, B is going to be up. Horizontal. So if we stretch it horizontally by a factor of two, that's like stretching it vertically by a factor of. If you stretch it this way by a factor of two, so you double the width, what have you done to the vertical length essentially? Halved it, you've compressed it. Sweet. So these two operate inverse of each other. If you stretch it vertically by a factor of two, you've stretched it horizontally by a factor of a half. You've compressed the function. And vice versa, if you stretch it horizontally, you've compressed it vertically. Cool? But it's important you're aware of those. If we see a negative C value, what's happening? Which way am I flipping it? Like this or like this? Show me with your hands. Are we shooting Colby or are we swiping on the touch field? Uh, who thinks we're going Kobe? Who thinks we're going swipe? 
No. So we're going COVID, okay? So a vertical translator, if we get a negative C value, it would turn our function into something like this. Happy with that? We're just flipping it over the x-axis. If our B value is negative, what do you think that's going to do? It's going to turn it. So instead of it being, um, we're going to flip it around this axis, so it'll do this instead. Happy with that? So that's what a negative B value does. Which is essentially turning it into a exponential decay. Okay. Awesome. Happy with that? So when we look at our log functions, what do we notice about the shape? Before we start with anything else, what do we notice about the shape of the log function? It's like an exponential. Yeah, so if you grab your book, look at an exponential, and then turn your book sideways. What does that look like? Logarithm. So logarithms and exponential, because they're inverse relationships, essentially we have the same graph, we're just flipping the axes. So it's a rotated exponential, they have a vertical asymptote. So we know that the exponential function has a horizontal asymptote because if you put something to the power, if you put a positive thing to the power of a number it never reaches or goes below zero. So conversely, because we can't get a negative value in our log, we have a vertical asymptote. So if I've got this function here, I know that x can never be zero or negative, so it never crosses that plane. And that's our general shape for a log. That doesn't mean log functions won't look any different. They can definitely go over the axis, but to do that, what do I need to apply? I need to apply trans yeah, transformations or translations. So again, here, our C value does what? Vertical dilation, our B value, our H value, horizontal translation, so we're just moving it, and our K value. Yeah. Now sometimes you'll see in both examples, right? So if I've got e to the power of 2x plus 1, what's my horizontal dilation? Not dilation, my horizontal translation. There's two answers here. H is equal to negative 1 or H is equal to negative 1 half. Have I moved my function one unit or half a unit to the left? I'll give it five to ten seconds to think about it. What's the B value? Two. Does the B value apply to one or both of those? So in the function here, what have I got? So I've got to apply a set of brackets and factorise, correct? So what's my h value? Is it negative 1 or negative a half? Negative a half. Because if I want to put it in the general form, I've got to do it like this. Does that make sense? Cool. So just be wary of that. That's one that pops up and occasionally catches you off guard, um, horizontal dilations are not as fun as vertical dilations, they're a little bit more tricky. So you can do be a little bit aware, um, but you're probably seeing some similarities between the log and the exponential function. Now I, I have to call these C, B, H and K, do you think every textbook in the history of man calls on those things? No. Some are going to call them A, some are going to call them you know, C, B and whatever. It doesn't really matter. What is important is their position. So you need to identify that's multiplying by the exponent, so that is our vertical dilation. Cool? I've just called them that. I try and keep H and K for your vertical and horizontal dilation and translations as much as possible, but we're about to do another one where I don't do that. So just be aware. There's a reason why I won't, obviously. But good. Uh, we should be now good to. Well, I wanted to finish up 10 and 11, but that doesn't really align with what I've just taught you. So we might come back to 10 and 11. We will come back to 10 and 11. Can we get textbooks? It'll be 